Good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to Dover International Speedway. You voted on the track tonight. We listened, and that is where we are coming to you live, right here on the Sim Racing Network, streaming to Joe Gibbs Racing Fa Go Joe Gibbs Racing's Facebook page, the uh, iRacing Esports Network, and our own personal YouTube. John Mushton, as always, on the call with me here tonight. Mitch Rolo in the production van, getting the picture that you see. To you, I am Ben Kilcrease. Thanks for joining us here on your off-season uh, uh, racing withdrawal uh, session. We'll, we'll call for here for the Monday night. Here we go, John. The Monster Mile, though, here at Dover. Boy, did the fans surprise us. We were we were thinking either it was it was going to be a, a, a rundown between Iowa and Darlington. We were prepared for both of those, and then you fans out there, man, you surprised us. You surprised everybody with uh, with your pick at Dover. But you made a good choice. We're gonna we're gonna see a good show tonight. Absolutely, Ben. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Uh, but I'm loving the choice, to be honest with you. Dover's actually one of my favorite tracks, especially in the Xfinity car. Uh, I've got a couple of victories here in the Xfinity car myself. It's a fun track to drive once you get the hang of it. Uh, it's one of those tracks that the professionals call a rhythm track, really. Um, if, if the green goes long enough, we'll see some guys get into a nice rhythm on this track. Uh, entries are going to be really kind of different for everybody, especially with this new dynamic lighting that uh, tends to change track conditions on a regular basis so i look forward to an exciting race tonight speaking of the track conditions let's take a look at the uh, interstate batteries weather at the track right now 78 degrees uh air temperature but john that track temperature 109 with winds uh, north at two miles per hour that track temperature gonna be the biggie with the with the partly cloudy skies here today uh, if we get some cloud cover it'll cool the track down for a brief moment but 100 almost 110 degrees that's uh that's going to cause for some slipping and sliding on corner exits here at the one mile speedway yeah uh, i think it was old dw that said it once it's slickery <laughs> slick and slippery uh and that's what makes the, the driving so much fun on this track though ben uh, especially once the you know get some grease down some grease well, you know some rubber is what i mean but uh once those tires get greased up and, and get slick, uh, these guys will be holding on to them for dear life, especially if you go on long green flag runs. As we've both seen in the past, the tires uh, tend to give up and start sliding around. So this, is, this will be really exciting. That it will. 100 laps, 100 miles here at Dover International Speedway for race number three in the Joe Gibbs Racing Offseason Sim Series powered by Interstate Batteries. John, let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's starting lineup. Inside of row number one, I talked to him before the race. He said, boy, I hope they picked over, and I think we know why. Trey Edson sets quick time here at the Monster Mile to his outside. Mr. Excitement in the number 88, that's Jason Jacoby. Uh, bringing it back there in third on the inside of row two, Chad Coleman in that 20 car. On his outside, the number 91 of Steve Goss Chalk. Nigel Standish will roll off inside of row number three. It's starting fifth in the number 11. To his outside, it's the 72 of Harrison Weidlitz. And folks, don't get confused. I'm about to tell you exactly who this is. This is Chad Cole. Uh, we have two drivers with very similar names in the field tonight. Uh, Chad comes in inside row four there uh, in the 82 car. And to his outside, Josh Parker in the 23 comes in eight. Scott Simley and Tony Manji, 12 and 66, respectively, there will make up row number five and round out the top ten as the rest of the starting grid uh, brought to you by RacingBids.com. Scrolls across the bottom of your screen. Here we go, John. Uh, these drivers have got 15 minutes of practice here at Dover, and I can guarantee you most of them was practicing either Darlington or Iowa or a mix of the two because they didn't think Dover was even going to be a possibility. So not only are they uh, learning the cars here at this track in the first uh, handful of laps, they're learning each other's braking points, acceleration points, turn in, apexes, all of that. So it's going to be really interesting for the start or for the first 20 or so laps of this race. Absolutely. I'm wondering how many of these guys have never seen this track in iRacing before uh, and, and understand how tricky these corners can be. It uh, should make for an interesting start, Ben. It's going to be fun, 100 laps, and we're so glad you've tuned in. Be sure to share this uh, video with your friends and family on Facebook, wherever you're tuning in tonight. Uh, if you're on the iRacing Esports Network over on YouTube, we thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe there and uh, like the video. Let us know where you're tuning in from, and we'll try and get you a shout-out across the uh, spectrum that we're streaming to tonight. Boy, we're on a couple of driver pages the joe gibbs racing facebook page iRacing racing esports network and we're getting ready to get down 
and dirty with it here at the Monster Mile, the pace car to pit road, 100 laps on the board for the top drivers in 500 and the top drivers in iRacing were underway in the JGR off-season sim series powered <laughs> by Interstate Batteries, race number three. And, John, did you see the wheel spin there on the wow. start? Man, I'll tell you what, that was insane. And look at that jump that Edson got on Jacoby back there. In the meantime, back behind them, it's still single file back to fifth where we got two wide. Uh, not as exciting as I thought it would be for some of these guys. You got some wheel spin, but not too bad, then. Yeah, they took it easy for sure on the first uh, restart. Maybe once we get some laps in and uh, if we get a restart later in this race, we'll see them uh, test the waters a little bit more there. Good battle just behind Chad Cole there between uh, Gotch Chalk. He's up uh, on the outside line and falling fast. Tony Manji trying to get around him there to 99. Yeah, I don't think that outside line's quite ready to be competitive just yet. So you can see 91 jump down inside the inside there and, and get down in line. And I think we're probably going to see a lot of single file for the first few laps, like you said, Ben, while these guys uh, get used to the track and each other and where they each like to break and go through these corners at. As the run goes on, John, we'll see that outside line become more dominant in side-by-side -side situations because that bottom lane has to check up or cannot get the power down coming off the corners. And we might even see some of the faster guys jump up there and make a pass on the outside line. It's all uh, all up for grabs as we're slowly working on lap number four here of 100. This race very early on. Everybody just trying to find their rhythm here at Dover. Absolutely, Ben. I tell you, um, I haven't been on Dover since the new build came out. It's been a little while, but uh, one of my two victories, I had a guy coaching me on a line that was really kind of a unique line. Uh, you wide all the way out on the back stretch, but we go in kind of like the 10 do, does right there. Go in low and then let it wash up just a little bit up to that midline and then come back out low until the tires wore out. And then it was almost the exact opposite uh, once tires wore out. I go in just a little bit high, arc it down low in the apex, and then kind of drift up and come out a little bit. But, uh, you know, we'll see what goes on with this new tire build and the new build itself and all the, the you know, the, the dynamic lighting and whatnot and how it changes the track. We'll see how these guys run. In the meantime, I think Edson's lead has been cut down quite a bit by that 88 of Mr. Excitement Jason Jacoby back there. It has three and a half tenths last time by this time by at the line. It's down to just under three tenths, almost two and a half tenths. So Jacoby definitely closing the gap to that number 10 machine early on here at Dover. John catching him is one thing, passing him, though, here at the Monster Mile, a completely different. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, uh, Jacoby has had a rough several weeks here, just not here in the uh, JGR series, but also over there in the Sim 500 series. He's been close to victory several times only to have some really bad luck or maybe a pit road incident bite him in the butt. So, I, you know, personally, I'm kind of pulling for the kid. He's, he's a nice guy. I've talked to him a few times offline. Uh, I hope he pulls it together tonight. But he's got, he's, like you said, he's got a, one thing to get up to Edson, and, and we both know how Edson drives. So once you get up to him, getting by him is going to be a whole different ordeal. Harrison Widelitz in that 72, a little bit further behind those guys, starting to drift back on the outside line, John, caught up. Around the outside here at Dover, you see Chad Cole working to the inside on that number 82. Watch how close they get off turn two here. Man, it tightens up down the front and down the back straightaways. Absolutely, man. The momentum of the car carries come off the turns, carries it straight up to the wall. So you got to be real careful, which is like you said earlier, uh, once we get some rubber down on that outside groove, that's going to be the place to be because that inside groove has to let up to make that car turn and, and to keep it off the wall as they come off the turn. If there's a car out there, he's going to lose some momentum while that car just keeps on going. Absolutely, and up front, here we go. The battle for the lead shaking up between Jacoby and Edson. Jacoby has caught that number 10 machine. We mentioned it, though. It's going to be hard to pass early on with no rubber up on that outside groove. We're a tenth of the way through this race as we complete lap 10, working on 11 of 100 in the Joe Gibbs Racing Off-Season Sim Series, powered by Interstate Batteries. You're watching oh, live the on the there. Sim Racing Network, and... Uh, incident on the back straightaway looks like he kept it straight yeah i believe that was the 11 car of nigel standish brought it out it's a little too far there like i talked about earlier he uh rubbed a little extra paint off his car there it looks like he's fine though back up front we've got quite the battle going on for that lead it looks like ben uh i look for jacoby he's probably gonna have to move that's not the way I don't, i'm not saying wrecking but he's probably gonna get up there and get him just a little loose get him to wash up a little bit to try and get under and make the pass or you get up there pressure him enough to make a mistake Absolutely. And, and then make the move there. That's uh, 
That's how a lot of these drivers like to work, uh, almost throwing it back to, to Dale Earnhardt. And you got to intimidate them to move them up That's the it. racetrack. Yeah, I mean, you, you look up, you got a mirror full of this guy that everybody knows. He, he loves to race hard, and you see him coming, and uh, you're not paying attention to your entry, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you've gone in too hard, and you're going to wash up. So that's your, that's, you know, that's one way to do it. And uh, we know how Jason Jacoby drives. He's a hard charger, man. I love that kid, the way he drives. It's always fun to see. He always puts on a show, and these two guys out in front have opened up uh, over two seconds to lead as we are still on board with Jason Jacoby as he is just breathing down the neck of Edson. Look how close he is down in the three there, John. He's almost uh, touching the bumper of Edson at the end of the straightaways. Yeah, and I tell you what, watching his entry into three there, uh, he, he loses a hair of ground going through the middle, but really gets a good surge coming off the turn. That's very impressive. And now he's going to try and work that outside just a little bit. Look at him. He's peeking out there, but I don't know if he's going to be able to make that kind of a pass just this early in the race. Boy, these guys are going at it, and Edson is uh, doing everything he can to hold off the 88's charge, but Jacoby is doing everything he can to get around that 10. You, you see him peeking up. Watch him down in one and two here. If he goes to the outside line, he does. He's all over the bumper. He almost gave him a tap in the center of one and two there, John, and had to check up there. Loose, lost a little bit of time, but not much. He's right back on the rear bumper again as we work lap 16 of 100 at the Monster Mile. Watch this run. He's going to get coming up off of four right here. Man, he gets right up to the bumper going down into one. Uh, you can't help the Oh, there you go. Is he, gonna, he got him to go up a little bit. Is he going to be able to make that pass, you think, Ben? I don't know. Edson pinches him down off two, yeah. and you see oh. Jacoby. Yep, can't put the power down on that inside line. That's why he's been testing the waters on the outside line. You see Edson now moving up the racetrack. He knows he can fend off that 88 charge on the inside and man these guys going at it for the lead early on here at dover putting on a show here comes jacoby a charge again he washes up the racetrack puts the hammer down off two and still cannot make the pass on that number 10 machine it's a very methodical uh, way you have to plan it out here at dover to make a pass absolutely you gotta do it almost a couple laps in advance ben and i tell you what as hard as these guys are driving each other it begs the question what's this doing to their tires we know tires are very important here at Dover. Uh, I, I can't help but think that they're going to wear each other out and wind up letting the rest of this pack catch back up to them here shortly. Boy, Jacoby went as, about as high as anybody's been so far this race, and he got a good run down the back straightaway, so he might have found some speed way up the racetrack where he was at over in turns number one and two. They both take the same line in three and four there, but wow, what a race they're putting on. Jacoby, again, going to go to the... Uh, uh, higher groove there Edson keeps it around the middle of the racetrack turns it down off turn two Jacoby he's flirting with that wall down the back straight away <laughs> you couldn't have put a piece of paper between him and the wall a minute ago and I tell you what though he's trying everything he can to get past Edson and and, and get that lead but I just uh I don't see him doing it without getting a little rough back behind them some battles going on around the racetrack. It's a battle for fifth between Nigel Standish and Chad Cole. And just behind him, Tony Manji, Harrison Weidlitz, and Weidlitz oh. is sideways, and he's going to curve, save it. He saved it somehow on the back straightaway. He, he curved, saved it, did he? <laughs> I thought I'll for tell sure you what, he was There's crashed. about 15 drivers behind him, Ben, right now. They're checking to make sure they're still breathing. Wow. What a close call there. And I was uh, all but going to say he's crashed, but a magnificent save from the driver of the number 72, keeping us under the green flag here at Dover, and I don't think he's got that much damage on the 72. He'll be able to sort of regroup, cool his tires down, and make another charge. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the most damage he's got on that car is just his tires. He, he, he warmed up pretty good there at that sideways slide, but I tell you what, that is an example of driver's craft right there uh i don't see people get that loose at dover and 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 bring it back in that was impressive yeah any any of uh anybody uh not in this series i mean we've got the top drivers and all of online racing here you you take your your joe blow and they would have uh ended up uh whacking the inside uh safer barrier on the back straight away but a great save nonetheless and he didn't lose too many positions, John. Just slipped out of uh, the top 10 by a couple there. He sits 12th right now here at the Monster Mile. It's still Jacoby 
all over your leader up front. And these guys have been going at it for the past 20 laps, it seems, here in uh, Dover, Delaware. And Jacoby just trying every inch on this racetrack to get a run on that 10 and to try and get around him. Yeah, he has not given up pursuit of that lead at all in any way, shape, or form. Tires be damned. I don't think they're any more concerned about tires right now than the next guy down. Uh, they've maintained that little over two-second lead over Chad Coleman back there in third for a good 15, 20 laps now, and we're just a little bit past the quarter away mark. Uh, again, this week I didn't really do a whole lot of research, so I'm not real sure what the fuel window has been. Do you, uh, you have any idea on that? I don't know. Uh, we, we were pretty prepared for... Uh, you know, Iowa, we kind of had an idea there. Uh, we had an idea of Darlington, and Dover was just, uh, again, on the on the fan vote side of things, we didn't think it would swing this way. We uh, A lot of these drivers weren't prepared. Uh, they didn't go out and do a full tire run or a, or a full fuel run. So a lot of these guys are, are for the first time in a couple months, experiencing uh, what these uh, Toyota Camrys are, uh, the Xfinity cars, are doing for the first time uh, on, on a long run. So that's really, really shaking things up. And it's taken, uh, like I said, it'd probably take a fifth or so of the race for these guys to get a grip on on how this car is going to handle on the long runs. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on that one, Ben. It looks almost to me like Edson's pulling out a little bit there on Jacoby. Not sure if Jason's just decided to take it easy or if he's finally wore the tires off that car. But uh, last time, the lap before that, it was just a nine one thousandths of a second uh, one car length barely and now he's got almost a three car length lead over him going down here into three and four so i'm guessing jacoby is uh still trying to figure out a way to get around him without wrecking each other <laughs> he could be cooling his stuff off to make a charge later in this run or he could be uh you know just just hanging back and taking a break for a moment and saying okay i'll let you run your stuff off trey and i'll come catch you in a lap or so but nonetheless the 88 slipping back here later in this run and John keep your eye on that number 20 machine Chad Coleman he's bringing Josh Parker Nigel Standish and Chad Cole with him these guys all in that little group right there are superb at saving tires and uh, are, are great long run drivers just keep your eye on them over the course of this run if we go another 20 or 30 laps here at Dover absolutely Ben it's a great point uh, one of our viewers, Mark Crichton, he points out that he's pretty sure it's 40 laps on tires, 40-ish on fuel. So maybe sometime in the next 10 to 15 laps, we'll start seeing some green flag pit stops. And last week, that was the bane of many of these drivers' race, was green flag pit stops. Absolutely. So we don't want to see uh, don't want to see any of that. It was in the uh, Ford Entertainment Group uh, series over at Sim 500 competition that saw green flag pit stops, you know, uh, make some drivers night and ruin many others. Uh, actually, Chad Coleman, who runs third in the race, he ended up going on to win the race at Michigan this past Tuesday night. And uh, John, he went through the infield after missing pit road and was yes, able to, sur yeah, was able to survive the rest of the race and just slowly but surely picked his way back up to the front and was there when the time counted at the end of the thing. And he's looking pretty good tonight, sitting in third, and he is. He's kept that uh, gap about two seconds this whole run. And you know, I've, I've personally raced with Coleman, and, and I know he does this on purpose. He, he, he sits back there. He lets the two leaders just run out and, you know, try and extend their lead. And he just keeps that, that consistent gap. And then as soon as he's ready to turn on the boosters, he does so, and he starts reeling them back in. So I'll keep a... We'll keep an eye on him over this run, and especially when pit stops begin to take place here at Dover. But nonetheless, just in front of your leaders, we have got a plethora of lap machines that they're going to have to deal with, and I guarantee you that will shake things up between the top two. Jacoby will close back up to the bumper of that 10 and maybe try and use one of these lap cars as a pink. Absolutely, and I've also got another observation to drop on here, buddy. Your, your man that you were talking about there, Chad Coleman, two seconds back, 2.062. But in the meantime, Josh Parker, Standish, Cole, those guys are dropping back almost three seconds back. So I think you, you hit on a pretty good point there. Coleman is not letting the leaders get away, but he's he's not falling back either. He's just uh, taking his time, buying his time. And now we got lap track fixing, uh, lap traffic, excuse me, fixing to play a part in this. I'll tell you what, Ben, uh, the, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Coleman was up there with Jacoby and Edson before this is over with. 
uh, looking to make uh, make his bid for the lead there. Boy, Nigel Standish is going to give up the fourth position to Chad Coleman. Got wicked loose off turn number two. Was able to save it somehow. Only lost a little bit of ground. Uh, he gave the fifth position away, uh, not the fourth. So Cole going to jump up to fourth, move Standish back to sixth on the leaderboard. And here we go up front. Edson going to catch the first pair of lap machines. They're going to go to the outside. That's John Wilco in the 97. He's going to catch him right on corner exit, and that is not good for the leader. That is a and you scary, see how much, scary place, yeah. You see how much Jacoby closes up on him. Down in the turn, number one, same deal again here. And it's going to be tight for Jacoby this time. Off two. Wow, these guys threading through lap traffic. I've been looking at some lap times also, Ben. They start off on lap one. Uh, 23-4 on lap two there, excuse me, was the fastest lap for Jacoby. And this last time by was a 25-3. So they're definitely losing a lot of, you know, a lot of rubber on these tires, a lot of a lot of speed there. Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if we start seeing some people duck in here. We're on lap 40 coming to the line right next, next time by. Uh, lap cars or not, we're going to start seeing some guys ducking down pit road, trying to get some new rubber on here and get fueled up. Absolutely. So looking at a two-second drop-off. And, John, if, I, if I'm uh, one of these crew chiefs and I know we can – make it to halfway and only pit one time then that's uh, that's going to be my plan come down split it right dead smack in the middle on lap 50 of 100 come down and that'll be a oh stop of the race and close call in front of the leader yep uh, a car up there one of the lap cars one of the slower cars got into the outside wall on exit there just a little bit that's got to make your heart stop as a race leader when you see that happen but it did, he didn't check up a whole lot now uh, he's still pushing forward through this lap track it but he's got, uh, he's got Jacoby right on his tail there. Uh, also coming through. It looks like a Jacoby wiggled a little bit. I'm telling you, these tires are starting to give up on him. It's, it's making life a little more interesting for him. That it is. As you see, Jacoby, we were kind of expecting him to close up on Edson in the traffic. But Jacoby hasn't caught uh, that big a break or a bigger break that uh, he needed to, to make some ground up on those, on those guys back here at the back of the pack. So nonetheless, Edson going to open up his lead after dealing with the lap traffic. Jacoby falling back about 15, 20 car lengths now here at the Monster Mile. He worked 42 of 100, and we could see pit stops just around the corner. Doug Sigmund will be the next driver to go a lap down. And uh, let's check in on Boris, our uh, pre-race host in the number 63. John, he sits 25th right now, and he's... Uh, He's in a nice little battle back here with a group of cars. Looks like he's going to come to pit road. Did he practice this in pre-race? Oh, looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, real good entrance there. He got under pit speed right, right at the nick of time. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, those socks have got to be an advantage for him. Sushi sock he's got on today, man. Sushi socks. How about that? <laughs> I can't wait to see what he's going to wear for uh, when we go dirt racing, when we come back from the, from the uh, Christmas vacation. Wow, it got cloudy out there, Ben. Look at that. So that's going to cool the track down a little bit if uh, if we continue to see the clouds stay over the racetrack for a little bit. But how about this uh, gaggle of cars right behind Chad Cole in the 82? Some lap cars, some on the lead lap trying to thread their way around. Boy, we're getting we're getting to that point of the race, John, where these tires are... It's really getting hard to control these cars to begin with, and when you put them in, uh, in two and three wide situations, it's uh, it's definitely a, a heart stopper. I think Harry is the word you're looking for there, yeah. Ben. Absolutely. You, these cars are wiggly loose now, and uh, it's like driving on oil out there in some part of the track. Uh, but I, you know, I'm looking at these lap times. I'm looking at these guys that are still out on the track. I think you hit on something there. I think a lot of these guys are thinking – one-stop race uh we'll see if that works out for him because here we are already on lap uh 47 coming to line and uh looks like we got somebody passing jacoby up to 71 there i think he just came off pit road with new tires that's brooks so yeah uh new tires are going to make a world of difference as far as lap speed here goes ben we'll see a lot of guys it looks like they're just flying on rockets out there absolutely and that's something that the guys on older tires will have to deal with over the next couple of laps until they get to the pit road how about chad cole Looking to the inside of Josh Parker. There was almost contact for that fourth spot. And Chad Cole in the 82 sideways off four trying to get that position. He's bringing Nigel Standish in the 11 with him. That's a good three-car battle for a spot just outside 
of the podium and those guys have been going at it for almost all race as well yeah it's a pretty exciting little fight going on back there considering these cars are real slippery right now uh, these, uh, these tires are excuse me i, I tell you what uh, it's a brave man that at this point in the race is i'm going to take you inside and see if i can't pass you right now like he's fixing to try going down to one we'll see how well it works out for cole to the inside he slides up the racetrack to get that apex coming off and look at parker there's contact between the two for fourth parker really put the pinch on him yeah he absolutely did took that little little bit of a uh, room off of him so he couldn't let it drift up a little bit there and they they take initially the same line through three and four they took through one and two last time by and the 23 is going to get the momentum on the outside with the run and be able to pull back out front and maintain his spot my oh my so a little contact there for fourth uh john this track is uh, uh similar to a to a short track in some instances it's a mile long and these guys are almost 170 miles an hour at the end of the straightaways but it drives almost identical to to, to some of the half miles uh you, you see all around the united states i heard one driver one time remark that's like a a, a steroided out bristol <laughs> i could see that yeah yeah i, I can see that i can see that. I'll tell you what ben here we are Lap 51, our leaders have taken the flag on lap one. Come to lap 52 now, so we're past the halfway point, and they still have not hit pit road. So uh, i tell you what, uh, you hit it on the nail, buddy. A one-stop race for a lot of these guys. Absolutely. As a uh, close call there for Standish as Doug Sigmund was trying to get out of their way in that battle for fourth, which is uh, just continuing to rage on, and it looks like we have a car off the pace. On the front straightaway, Tony Manji. And look at this. There's a three-way battle with uh, Boris involved in that number 63. They get it all sorted back out. But, boy, those guys are duking it out back there for 12th with Standish. And, and uh, I'm sorry, that's um, not Standish. Standish is on pit road is what I meant to say, similarly in the 12. But uh, here we go, John. The first couple of guys coming down pit road. You see Nick Silver there. Uh, Harrison Widelitz and Nigel Standish all down pit road here uh, on lap 52, 53 at Dover. You see Edson still out, still though, out on the racetrack. Jacoby has come down pit road in the 88, so that will give him a slight advantage. So I can, I can expect we'll see Edson down this lap in that number 10. Absolutely. I think he's coming in now, actually. Yep, here he comes now. That leaves Coleman on the track, and Coleman's coming in behind him. And Coleman made up a lot of room coming down into the pit road there. So uh, coming off pit road, these two will be fighting with each other and Jacoby, it looks like, for the lead it's once this all cycles out. Yeah, it's going to set us up for a good battle once it all cycles out. And the thing you have to worry about, John, and I, you, you told me not to mention it, but I'm going to have to, is with these different strategies, people pitting, oh, coming off of pit road, coming on to pit road, you got to watch out for a caution while you're down pit road that would that would be uh that would be uh almost a, a race ending um occurrence for some of these drivers especially right now with the leader and cole on pit road uh at least you wait way past lap one ben i'm proud of you i really am oh and simley gets a bumper in the 12 there sideways but saved it and he says i've had enough i'm going to pit road I'm sure that was quite the wake-up call for him there. Uh, that's what we were talking about earlier, Ben, when a car on really old tires is still on the track and you got a car on brand-new tires, sometimes that closure rate catches that guy behind a little off guard. And it also looked like somebody might have got a little bit loose there. I don't think it was entirely uh, a contact that got him like that. But uh, it all worked out for the better, and we got him on pit road getting some new tires now. So we wait for everything to sort of cycle around here at Dover International Speedway. So glad you've tuned in with us tonight on the Joe Gibbs Racing Facebook page and the iRacing Esports Network and on our uh, YouTube, the Sim Racing Network. It's the round number three in the Joe Gibbs Racing Off-Season Sim Series. We're just past halfway. Uh, this series powered by Interstate Batteries. Just by halfway here at Dover, the Monster Mile. The fans voted for Dover, uh, boy, we were kind of surprised by that. We were expecting either Darlington or Iowa after seeing the, the great race we saw in Iowa there in the qualifier. But this race, John, has not disappointed. These guys have been duking it out all race long. We've seen some fantastic racing from the Monster Mile. And don't look now, Ben, but 
Jason, Mr. Excitement, Jacoby snagged the lead away from Edson on pit road and has quite a substantial lead on Edson. Once the rest of the field that hasn't pitted yet, uh, you know, does so and it shakes out, it looks like Jacoby's going to have a pretty decent lead over Edson. Yeah, so just confer just uh, confirming he does not have the lead right now. No, no I'm but, sorry if I um, confuse anybody on that. Yeah, you know, anything could happen. If, if a caution comes out right now, John Brian Macklin, who has stayed out on the racetrack, he's in he's in good shape. He, he would uh, take yes, the he lead is. of this race, and he would uh, just run away with it the best he could in that number 30 machine. He's still... Uh, one lap ahead of Jason Jacoby. So Jacoby is a lap down in sixth. He is in the lucky dog position. We have five drivers that have not pitted yet. Those Take are, that back, uh, Ben. Actually, I think Sigmund and Lockhart did pit, but they just pitted really early. Could be. We'll have to we'll, we'll double check on those. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, uh, well, Sigmund, Sigmund is down pit road right now. So uh, there goes Sigmund. I'll give uh put Jacoby back on the lead lap as he gets around Brian Macklin but nonetheless four drivers still uh still on the lead lap Macklin Jet Gabu and Lockhart and it looks like I'm wow sorry, look John. at that yeah. gaggle no I didn't yeah. mean to walk on there's a gaggle of cars uh I was just getting a report from Pitt Road that the 99 got hit with a speeding penalty that's Tommy Ryan that's gonna hurt that it is he'll uh he'll fall back most uh, definitely outside of the top 20 We'll see once everything cycles around. Still got a couple guys on mixed strategies out on the racetrack trying to maybe catch a caution. One of those, Brian Macklin in the number 30, right in front of him. Uh, it's the um, Jonathan Lockhart machine. He is scored eighth right now. He's trying to catch a caution to gain some track position. Jacoby, Edson, and Standish and Chad Cole now have all found themselves back on the lead lap. And there was almost a crash with your leader, Brian Macklin. Oh, yeah. Look at that gaggle of cars is in now. This is uh, this is hairy for a driver, especially when you're the leader of the race. Most everybody on the track got better tires than you. You're just trying to stay out of the way and hope for a caution, but you also don't want to be the caution. Absolutely. So Macklin is he's going to push this car, John, as long as he can on those tires and hope for a caution because now if we get a caution, all those guys that just take that just took the tires, they're going to come back down. And here comes Macklin. He's yep, finally going to get on the pit road. Oh, I think he was too fast. Entering. It looked like we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. But man, that was cut really close. It looked like I was watching his speed as he came down and across the line there, and it was close. So that's going to give the lead to Rich Jet in that number seventy-seven. Haven't talked about him much tonight as he's trying to. He's another one of those guys just uh, hoping for a caution. He and uh, Chris Gabu still out on the racetrack, and Jet's going to make another lap or so as the leader, and Jacoby continuing to eat away at his lead, only 12 seconds back right now, or last, night, last time by, and he'll probably close that to under 10 this time with those new tires. So Jet is running out of time if he's going to get a caution to save himself from having to pit. I'm telling you, Jacoby's making up almost two seconds a lap on Jet and Gibo, uh, Gibo, or I'm sorry, I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Gibo, uh, yeah, he's making up almost two seconds a lap on those guys. So uh, if I'm them, I'm, I'm hitting pit road soon. Oh, but there's a car in the wall. It's Calantoni up in turn number two. He was able to get it back off the wall and saves it. But, boy, we've had some close calls here in the last couple of laps. Still can't believe we've gone all this way, man. Lap 68, no caution, knock on wood, but it's looking great out there. I tell you what, we've got so many different strategies been on tires and fuel that uh, I don't even know who to who to look at now. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as these final two drivers on the racetrack, Gabu and Jet, as soon as they – Oh, and there's Caution's a caution. Out. Caution is out. Caution That's is out. That's what they wanted to see right there. And the caution is going to be for possibly the number 30 machine. It is. It's Brian Macklin. Oh, our former leader, the guy who stayed out for the longest time there for a while. And, yeah, he, he just just got loose out of four here, John. And that could be a product. These guys get so used to driving their car on the old tires 
that once they get new tires on a thing, it, it handles completely different. And that yeah. could have been the case there for Macklin as he spins it out here at Dover, bringing out the first caution of the night and handing Rich Jet the lead. And boy, talk about catbird seat for the number 77 <laughs> and for the number one of Chris Caboo. Uh, is pit road open and they didn't come down? No, pit, they're on pit road right now. Leaders are down on pit road and, and the cars you see on I the racetrack, John, yeah, are I was the, looking cars at the, wrong that, car. uh, the cars that are, have not uh, gotten their lap back. So they're going to be trying to get the wave around. Right. And um, a lot of these guys won't, with the wave around position, John, they won't be able to stop for tires. So that, uh, that'll certainly throw a kink in, in their strategy on this restart. My, oh, my, how about this race, though? It has changed the face that caution did. Caution number one comes 70 laps after the initial green flag and just 30 laps shy of the finish. And I tell you what, mistakes on pit road. It, with these guys got to get in and get out without making any mistakes at all. Uh, and that's going to be key to winning this race for those guys. Uh, so Jacoby's off pit road out in front of Edson, and it looks like uh, Rich Jet won the race off pit road. It's actually Gavu. Gavu wins the race off pit road in the one machine, so he'll lead us back to the green flag alongside that number 77. Jacoby will restart third, fourth to Edson and Chad Cole. Going to round out the top five here. My, oh, my. So we'll take a quick <laughs> take a quick break to remind you fans tuning in on the Joe Gibbs Racing Facebook page and the iRacing Esports Network that uh, we take the next couple weeks off for the Christmas and New Year's break here in the uh, JGR Offseason Sim Series powered by Interstate Batteries. But the second week in January, we come back for Dirt Midget Racing. How about that? And, and our very own Ben Kilcrease may be, we haven't confirmed it yet, but Ben, <laughs> we heard you might be climbing in behind the wheel on one of those bad boys. I might do. We might, uh, me and Joey, you got uh, Jatina, the, the, the league owner at Sim 500, uh, who organizes all a lot of us behind the scenes here me and him might be trading trading spots so he might give up his seat i might give up my seat so we'll just have to see we'll, we'll, we'll wire out the details but nonetheless that'll that'll be fun if it does happen that that should be real fun <laughs> you'll have a you'll have a uh you'll have an awesome in-race reporter i can tell you that yes absolutely back to dover though Boy, this restart's going to be wild, John. You have two of these guys um, that uh, that have just played the strategy right tonight, and they are going to restart on the front row. Chris Gabu started 20th. Rich Jett started 30th in wow. this race, and they now lead here at Dover. Gabu leads Jets at second. So... I, I, nothing against these guys, but they certainly uh, um, don't have the they speed. They roll the dice. Yeah, they roll the, they roll the dice, but uh, under green, they don't have the speed that Jacoby and Edson do because they are just – Edson and Jacoby are just blistering fast here at the Monster Mile. So they're going to have to be patient uh, trying to get around these guys, and hopefully uh, we don't see any contact. But nonetheless, we mentioned earlier, it's, a, it's like a short track in some cases. So the bumpers are, are not out of question, especially at this point in the race, John. We're under 30 to go. We'll restart this thing with 27 laps to go at the Monster Mile. And let's not forget, it's a self-cleaning racetrack. What we mean by that, folks, is when a car spins out up high, he's going to wind up down low but down by the fence. So if one of these guys gets moved or gets out of shape in any way, shape, or form and spins up front, we're liable to see a very large accident uh, where the track gets completely blocked up. But, hey, let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, pace car is about to duck in here, Ben, and uh, uh, we're going to get it going. Did you just mention the big one? No, I did not. I did <laughs> not. That's a figment of your imagination, sir. Here we go. Pace car to pit road. 27 laps to go, separating one of these drivers from a win in round number three in the JGR offseason sim series, powered by Interstate Batteries. Kaboo, banging the gas. We're back underway. And that second lane, or second row, rather, dropping back as they enter turn number one boy edson tried to make it three wide with rich jet jet closed the gap jacoby up to second and trying to chase down your leader i tell you what that was a great start and mr excitement back there in third place now take second place away behind him though we've got quite a grudge match going for oh wow that guy washed up really high there 
for that third spot. Uh, I don't think the outside line's ready yet for these guys on new tires there, Ben. I don't think so. I think the outside line better in the uh, once the tires have gotten some wear on them. Earlier in the run, though, that bottom lane is where you want to be. Challenge for the lead. Here comes Jacoby to the inside of the number one. Jacoby wastes no time getting down the inside, going down here in a turn three and four. Coming up, he's going to pull him, it looks like, on the inside and take over the lead. He's bringing the 82 car with him of Coleman. And I tell you what, Edson's back there itching to get by these guys so he can get back up there and fight for the lead as well. Boy, Edson was pushing Chad Coleman down the front straightaway. Looks like it may be a replay of that on the back straightaway. Edson says we can't let Jacoby get too far out in front of this thing. He's got some good short run speed, and that's exactly what we're up against right now, a short run to the finish at the Monster Mile. That clean air on the nose of the ADA of Jacoby makes all the difference in the world right now. He's got nobody to slow him down. He's got all the downforce he needs on the front of that car. In the meantime, Edson's got a car in front of him that makes him just a little arrow tight. Ooh, and we got five fourth place cars in the wall back there. It doesn't look like it slowed him down too much, but you got to really pay attention to that. Nigel uh, doesn't want to get harder than that wall. He's going to wind up taking himself out. That was Nigel Standish in the number 11 as the battle for fifth is going to go on. It's going to be a quick one between Josh Parker and Chris Gabu. Gabu drops back to sixth, and even if he uh, can, you know, uh, salvage a top ten position here, John, that would be a, a great run for that number one who rolled the dice on pitch strategy. Absolutely. I can't help but wonder, are we, do we have confirmation that he took four tires? It almost seems like he took two the way his car is driving right now. He did beat the 77 off pit road, but I, I, I do believe you know, especially with 70 or so uh, more laps on your left sides, I'd, I'd have to take four. But we we can confirm that here shortly as the battle just behind them now. Chad Coleman, uh, he, he had a issue on those green flag pit stops. He had to or uh, lost a little bit of time in that number 20 coming off pit road. And he's mired back in the now seventh position, trying to work his way back through the field, trying to get back to a top five position. In the meantime, back up front, the, the 88 of Jacoby has uh, got a very comfortable half a second lead there over the number 82 of Chad Cole. Edson still has not figured out a way around Chad Cole. In the meantime, behind him, Stanish is kind of picking his pace back up, trying to gather himself back up after brushing that wall earlier. He might make a fight for third here shortly. Certainly could, as we are now under 20 to go here at Dover International Speedway, and Jacoby leads by just about a half a second over Chad Cole and Trey Ensign. Do they have anything for him in the final? Now 19 laps of the race. 19 to go, Ben, and I tell you what, I'm really looking at the, I'm really liking what I'm seeing with the 88 car. He's very smooth in, smooth off, smooth out. Uh, he's not taking, he's not pressing that car too hard. I'm looking at his lap times. He's not really blazing any lap times here, so I think he's, you know, now he's got a nice, comfortable lead. He's going to try and save his car as much as he can for when somebody does get up challenging. In the meantime, back there in third place, I'm watching Edson, and it's like he's, I can see him in the cockpit, scratch his head, trying to figure out how's he going to get past this guy because he knows he's faster than the 82. He's been faster than the 82 all race long. Uh, how much time does he want to waste back there, you think? I don't know. I, if I'm him, I'm trying to get past that guy as soon as possible. I don't yeah. want the 88 to get too far away from me. Yeah, running out of time, and Jacoby is extending his lead lap by lap. The thing we have to look at, John, is Edson has not had to really deal with a lot of dirty air tonight. He's been out in front of this field for a good portion of the race, so this is the first time he's having to, you know, ride behind somebody, challenge somebody for position, and that could be uh, throwing, a, throwing a loop for the driver to number 10. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one, Ben. And another thing to think about, I don't think they're going to have no time for low traffic playing this. I don't, I don't see uh, maybe one car up there ahead of Jacoby that they'll have to deal with. I don't know if they're going to get into a whole gaggle of cars like we saw earlier in that long green flag run. Uh, we'll see, I guess, but I just don't think Edson can waste a whole lot of time trying to get around that 82 car, and he can't depend on slower traffic to do it for him either. Absolutely. And Jacoby continuing to extend that lead down a back stretch and into turn number three. Boy, he has had a up and down season, mostly down, and he has been looking for that win here in Sim 500 competition for about the last two or three months as we're on board with him as he works his way through turn number one. Smooth in, smooth out, and he's opening up that lead more and more. And wow, that was a close call in front of him there. Gail Brooks in the number 71 up and into the wall, slowed down, and it's going to get real tight off turn four for your leader. He has to check up to get around the lap machine. See, this is what I'm talking about, Ben. Every week I say something, and these guys, 
do the exact opposite. Yeah, they're not going to hit lab traffic. Duh. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jacoby handled that really well, though. He he was able not to panic um, when he saw that slower car out there and, and maintains a pretty, pretty significant lead over the 82, but he did lose a little bit of ground uh, to the 82. But in the meantime, back there behind the 82, so have the 10 of Edson, and behind him, Nigel Standish in fourth. I was going to ask John, how much, as a driver, does that throw you off a rhythm? You know, if you run up on a lap car like that on one of the corner exit, how, how, how long does it take you to get back into a rhythm? How long does it take you to shake that off and uh, continue what you were doing before? Well, you have to, you have to make it quick. I mean, I, that's happened to me a couple of times. One of my wins at Dover, actually, I got into the back of a lap car. Uh, he washed up a little higher than I thought he would coming off a of two, and uh, I got square into his bumper and wound up putting him down on the inside wall. I didn't mean to, but it's a hazard. Uh, and it rattles you, man. It rattles you for several laps, especially if you actually make, oh, he like that. He almost made contact with that lap car, almost the exact same way I had my problems. So that's it's just something that really, uh, it's a hazard. And Chad Cole is loving it. Here comes the 82. 11 laps to go at the Monster Mile. Can the 82 catch the 88? Boy, look at Standish oh, wow. for third, all the way on the apron in turn one, battling uh, Trey Ensign. It's in sending in there, man. I, oh, that car that car got in the wall back there, that lab car that uh, Jacoby was fighting with earlier. Uh, I believe it was a tw uh, 29. Yeah, he that's a Welton back. He got to the wall there and, and almost got himself out of control there. But, yeah, that, uh, I don't know what happened. Edson, if he just sitting in there on purpose like that or what, but he washed up a lot and almost gave Stanish a shot at the inside there. So Chad Cole is starting to close that gap. It's now 10 to go, 9.5 as they work down the back straightaway here at Dover. Is he going to have enough time to get to the bumper of the 88? There's a couple of lap cars that they may get into before the finish of this race. Nine laps to go in Delaware, and he is closing about three one-hundredths a lap. That's about a half a car length, so you got to pick up the pace. Right now, Jacoby is his own worst enemy out there on that track. Everything that can go wrong is going through his mind right now. He's got to put that out of his head and focus on getting into these corners and getting off these corners the same way he's been doing for the last 20 laps. Uh, and, and right here, getting by this pace, this uh, lap car, excuse me, that's a little off the pace, uh, you know, that's going to shake him up a little bit, but it looks like he's going to do a pretty fine job of getting by there. The 82 car awaits no time getting on the inside of the 14 there. So like I was saying, though, Ben, uh, he's got to get all that out of his head. He's got to focus on just being as smooth as he can in, smooth off, without making any mistake. I think he's going to have clear ground at least for about five laps. We've only got seven to go, so if he catches these two cars in front of him, hang on, Chad Cole may have a shot. Chad Cole still might have a shot nonetheless. Look at him over in turn number two, John. We don't need telemetry. We can see that gap with our eyes starting to close. Absolutely. I owe that 82 team an apology. I didn't think they had the speed to keep up with Jacoby. They have proven me wrong. They are running down that 88 car. And I tell you what, if Jason doesn't wake up and look in his mirror and see that he's losing ground and start doing something about it, He's going to have a fight on his hands for that lead here shortly. We we all know Chad Cole, I do believe, finished runner-up in the uh, Trans Service Monday Money Series at the Sim 500 uh, Racing League. He is one of the top drivers in all of iRacing. He knows how to save his equipment. He knows how to make an end uh, run at the end of a race. He's only got five laps to do it, though, here in this one, and he is... Oh, he's just not closing quick enough, John. I don't think he's going to get there without a mistake from that 88. I think you're right, Ben, but look at this right here. John Wilco in the uh, number 97 car, way off the pace right there. He's going to he's gonna poke, his, uh, not poke his nose in there, but he's going to be a factor in this chase for the lead. And uh, just in front of him, uh, well, just in front of Jacoby now is the 98 of Steve Herring. That's another lap car. I'm very certain that they're going to catch these guys. So, uh, again, lap traffic may play a part in the finish of this race. Kobe opened up a little bit that time at the line. Chad Cole, though, still within striking distance. Here comes Herring. Herring, a uh, very veteran and sportsmanlike move, slows up in the middle of the turn, lets them clear before the exit. Now, three Absolutely. to go for Jason Jacoby. Now, I'm telling you what, right now, <laughs> Jacoby is his own worst enemy, man. I've been where he is, and you just got to somehow convince your mind to shut the hell up and let me drive. That's what it gets down <laughs> to, basically. But here comes Cole. Boy, he's closing in. We're coming to two to go this time by at the Monster Mile. Does Chad Cole have anything left? And there's oh, a caution. caution. And that's going to be the race right there, man. I hate to see that. I mean, I'm happy for Jacoby taking his first win in the series. But, man, 
I really think Cole had something for him there in the last couple of laps. Absolutely. Caution out for the only the second time here tonight and on the iRacing service. Uh, we don't have green-white checkers, so this one going to end under pacing, and that is, uh, man, that's a, a sour circumstance as we've, we've had it quite a few It truly is, Ben. Under Steve the, Myers, uh, if you're watching our broadcast, which I really think you should, uh, <laughs> fix this. We need green-white checkers. So nonetheless, Jason Jacoby going to get the white flag this time by here at Dover International Speedway, and this race going to finish under pacing. But, boy, I don't think Jacoby minds how this race finishes. As Not long at as all. He's going to cross I'm, that I'm line first. I'm happy for Jason Jacoby right now, man. Mr. Excitement finally gets him one, huh? Can you imagine what this interview is going to be like, Ben? I'm kind of <laughs> jealous of you, buddy. It's going to be fun. As uh, Chad Cole, man, he was kind of hoping it would go green there. And I don't know if he would have got to the bumper of the 88 or not. He was certainly starting to close. I think uh, right there at three to go, he, he kicked the boosters on and was trying everything he could. But that was going to be fun to see nonetheless in those final three laps. But the caution Absolutely. comes out, and it's going to end it. Uh, pretty much uh, at the uh, at the time of caution. So Cole will finish second. Trey Edson, who uh, led a majority of this race, over half of the race, he'll end up finishing third. Good run for Nigel Standish. He'll come home fourth. And Josh Parker going to finish fifth here at Dover. Final time through three and four, though, for Jason Jacoby. I'll tell you what, I'm so happy for that kid right now. Uh, he's a great guy. I've talked to him several times on Facebook, uh, you know, offline and whatnot. Um, off the sim, I should say. Great guy. Real nice kid. Uh, got a good head on his shoulders, you know, and he loves the race, man. He's shown it to us, Ben, several times over these last few weeks in both of these series, how much he loves to race. And he races as clean as he possibly can, but he races very hard, very reminiscent of a certain black number three that we used to watch years and years ago. Absolutely. It's now official. Jacoby, winner in round number three at Dover. We'll talk to him and the rest of the podium finishers in just a moment as we watch him circle around this one-mile speedway. I can almost guarantee you what's coming up next, John. Yeah, they don't want to miss. They don't want to miss this interview that's coming up. Guys, if you're going to take a break, go to the commercial and come back. Jacoby, going to burn them down on the front straightaway, though, first. Yeah. We'll go silent here in the booth. We'll, uh, we'll watch him. We'll watch this burnout from the 88 machine. And then we'll talk to him shortly. So Jason Jacoby burning them down here at the Monster Mile, and John Mushin has worked down the pit road, and he's going to catch up with the driver who finished third tonight, the driver that led a majority of this race. John? That's right, Ben. I'm down here with Trey Edson, driver of the number 10 car. Trey, I know this is not where you wanted to finish tonight, man. You led a majority of this race tonight, but a uh, third place still ain't bad, man. Uh, talk to me about your race tonight, buddy. Uh, yeah, you're uh third's all, it's a good night just a little mad at myself for uh the green flag pit stops i don't i don't know if that one lap difference made that big of a difference for jason or if i was just too easy um getting on a pit road i know this pit road's tricky so um i tried to, to take it easy but i might have went too easy and then 
then on warm tires, I didn't want to slide through my box, and uh, I think I took it a little easy getting into my stall. So I just threw away a bunch of time, and uh, I kind of knew I was in a bad spot when he got by me. Um, I don't, I didn't think we had enough laps left for me to run him back down on speed, and it took about 30 to 35 laps for me to start pulling him away with um, saving my tires. So I uh, just, just kind of knew I kind of threw that one away, and then the restarts there was. I don't want to talk down on competition but uh i think they know they weren't at the front all night long so um just kind of got bottled up on the restart they they're not uh not used to it i guess the best way i can i can put that uh, they're great people they just uh didn't really you know what i mean i don't, I don't know how to politely say it I don't, I don't want it to come out wrong so um i think people know what i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, folks trey trying to be politically correct and nice uh you don't see that in a driver very often but hey uh trey <laughs> Still, man, a really good run. Uh, third place was nothing to shake a stick at, buddy. Uh, is there anybody you want to thank for your run tonight? Uh, yeah, just thank you guys for uh, putting this on. Uh, Joey and Sim 500 and then Boris and uh, Interstate Batteries and Joe Gibbs Race and all them. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun deal to be a part of. I like the qualifying races on Thursday. It's different. And then um, I wouldn't say they're sprint races, but they're not crazy long. So it's fun. It's a fun series to be a part of them. I'm, I'm glad we get two weeks off. Um, but the next one's... Next one's going to be fun. I might end up on my lid or outside the racetrack. I don't I don't know where I'm going to land, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, Trey Edson, of course, referring to our dirt midgets that we're coming up to next. Uh, folks, please tune in for that. You will not be disappointed. Trey, thank you for your time, my friend. Congratulations on our third-place run. I'm going to throw it back up to the booth for Ben while I go track down our second-place driver, Chad Cole. Thank you, John. Edson, looking forward, maybe, to the dirt. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Another driver that... Uh, was looking forward to racing this thing out at the end is caught up now with uh, John Mustin. That's Chad Cole. John, what's he got to say about the race? Well, Ben, let's find out. Chad Cole, John Mustin here, man. Uh, <laughs> buddy, I owe you and your team an apology. I, I kind of wrote y'all off on that last restart. I didn't think you had anything for uh, Jacoby, but my friend, you were looking great out there running him down. I think if it had gone green, you'd have probably had something for him. You looked like you were a lot better through the center of the turn than he was. Uh, talk to me about your run tonight, bud. No offense taken. I was about to write myself off there, too, with uh, being surrounded with Trey and, and all those other guys chasing me down. Um, I don't know. You know, I feel like sometimes in these races, I just spend the first about two-thirds of the race learning the track and, and what to do. And uh uh, I was trying to search around a little bit uh, there at the end, and, and Trey kind of poked in the bottom there. So I went back to the bottom and ended up, uh, I realized I was actually gaining on Jacoby just a hair maybe. So I was just trying to continue to slow roll the bottom, and um, you know, the caution came out with two to go. I don't, I don't even if I got there, I'm not sure I would have had anything. I mean, for him, um, I would have needed a pretty big screw up on his part to get around him. So, I mean, uh, We'll take second. You know, I'm I'm pretty happy with the effort tonight. Had a, a couple of a good uh, pit stops there on pit road, and uh, was able to pick a couple cars off that way too. So that's always good when you can do that. Well, Chad, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, like I like I said, you looked like you were doing a lot better through the middle of the turn there towards the later part of that run. Uh, congratulations again on a second place finish. Is there anybody you'd like to thank? Yeah, I gotta thank uh, Sim Racing Network for the the broadcast that you guys do. It's always fun to go back and watch uh, a race after a, a broadcast, and you guys do a good job with that. Uh, really great commentary and and uh, video quality too. So it's uh, uh, great to have uh, you guys on board for that. Uh, gotta thank Joey and Boris and uh, everybody at uh, JGR and, and Interstate Batteries for for putting this uh, program on once again. It's it's really a, a cool thing to be a part of. And I've been sim racing for uh, well, 18 years now, I guess. And um, uh, it's definitely the coolest thing I've been a part of. I have to wholeheartedly agree with you there, Chad. Thank you for your time, my friend. Ben, that was Chad Cole, our second place driver tonight. I believe you're heading down to Victory Lane for the old school's graphics and designs Victory Lane interview with Jason, Mr. Excitement Jacoby. And I cannot emphasize this enough, Ben. I'm really jealous of you right now. <laughs> well, you'll get to hear it, though, John. Jason Jacoby here in Victory Lane at the Monster Mile. And how about that? The monkey finally off your back here in the JGR series. 
Thanks, Ben. It's like awesome to, to be here. Thanks so much to Interstate Batteries. I've got one in my car, and they are just awesome, outrageously dependable batteries. And uh, thanks to Joe Gibbs Racing, everyone involved in Sim 500 for putting this on. And everyone, of course, the biggest thing, biggest ones to thank is everyone watching this. Uh, it's really cool to be here and uh, really cool to, uh, like you said, I guess get the monkey off the back. We've got some really good runs here in Sim Racing, and uh, it's cool to break through and get the victory in, like, the biggest thing in Sim Racing. Let's talk about that uh, that that final caution or or the 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 the, the first caution rather uh, when it when it came out there you you come down you you you're already ahead of uh, Edson and the whole rest of the field as far as uh, when it was going to cycle around but but you come down on the pit road and two guys who kind of rolled the dice on pit strategy stay out what's what's going through your mind and how you're going to work around them. You know, Ben, I was thinking, like, all I got to do is really just uh, not worry about it at all. You know, it is what it is, kind of just settle in and, and try to do a good job. Um, when I got to the back bumper of Trey early on, Trey is a wheel man, by the way. He's up front every race, um, anyone who's not familiar with Trey. Um, but uh, it was cool to be able to catch him. But um, my computer started lagging a bit, so I had to back off him, uh, which is why I lost so much time uh, toward the halfway mark of the race. And then, um, you know, once we – cycled through the pit stops i was surprised to get that big of a lead on trey and uh we just went out there and then um tried to put together some clean laps and and had fun doing so and then when we got the the uh last yellow or second to last yellow ben like you said man the monkey's off my back because normally in those situations i, I lose spots um but this time it worked out and we ended up getting the win Worked out perfectly, perfectly, and in victory lane tonight, Mr. Excitement, John, calls him Jason Jacoby. We had uh, we, we take a short vacation two weeks, and, and then we come back for dirt. How do you feel about that? That's um, really cool because I actually don't run dirt that much, but it's going to be a lot of fun to do that for the, you know, for the first time in the league race, and, and so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I heard uh, that Chad Cole is the admin for that. So once again, thanks to admins, Joe Gatina, Chad Cole, Brian Workman, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to dirt. It's going to be fun, but, but also, uh, also been right quick. I want to say, Hey, all my fellow Kyle Bush fans out there watching and rooting me on really cool to have everyone watching again. <laughs> awesome. Jason, who do you want to thank for putting you in victory lane tonight? Um, I'd like to thank all my viewers, um, over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash JJ 88, but uh, everyone watching on the Joe Gibbs racing stream, and um, also, I have a website, simracingjason.com. You can find out all about my sponsors who, who help out as well. Uh, with, as far as if you need a brand new computer to go iRacing with, um, the best deals are, are available on, on my website. You can find out who to contact for that. Uh, the reason I had lag on this computer is because it was kind of rushed out to me because we had to get it last minute. Um, my, my builder wanted to get me something better. But anyway, guys, yeah, simracingjason.com, racing without the G. And uh We'll see if uh, hopefully you guys can get an eye racing if you haven't done it yet. Uh, my sponsor for computers, guaranteed lowest prices. There you go. Jason Jacoby, winner here at Dover. And boy, John, good to see. Finally gets the monkey off of his back in uh, in the JGR offseason sim series powered by interstate batteries and in sim 500 competition. Tell you what, Ben, if if it holds like it has for the last couple of weeks with this uh, with this series, the replay over on the JGR uh, Facebook page gets about 35, 40,000 views. So Jacoby just picked himself up a victory in front of a whole bunch of people. Absolutely. And uh, if, you, if you're if you're watching the race tonight and want to uh, tune into the replay, all you have to do is wait for us to uh, to, to close the broadcast down, and and then we'll. Uh, then it will, be, it will be available on the Joe Gibbs Racing Facebook page. It will be available on our YouTube, youtube.com forward slash The Sim Racing Network. So uh, just an unbelievable race again, John. A uh, spectacular show these guys put on from the Monster Mile. We were kind of kind of shocked at the beginning of the night that this track was even voted for. We were, we were almost 100% sure we were going to Darlington or Iowa. But, man, the fans came out and... I think they were right on this one, John. I think they picked a good one. Absolutely, Ben. Pleasantly surprised and very pleasantly surprised, as a matter of fact, that this race went like it did. Uh, it wasn't the wreck fest. That you, now, Let's be honest. We've both been in open racing, high <laughs> racing service, and sometimes Dover can really reach up and bite somebody in the butt, man. But these guys didn't have any practice on this track hardly at all, and they put out an outstanding race. Uh, you know, they were 
patient with each other. Um, they were, you know, uh, they gave and gave and, and took when they had to, but, you know, didn't take, you know, in a, in a pretty nasty way. So I was very impressed with these guys. But every week, week, these guys get better and better and better. And I'm just saying, uh, like uh, Chad, I've been doing this for a long time, my friend. Uh, uh, way back with uh, Papyrus as NASCAR Racing first came out. And to see the level of driver we have in this series and the Sim 500 FEG series is very impressive. It's awesome to see. Remember, we take uh, two weeks off, and then when we come back, we're dirt racing in the midget. and Slinging mud, baby. There you go. Uh, well, you can find out all the info and, and see uh, who, who who all finished where over at Sim500.com. Um, John, we head to uh, Indianapolis tomorrow in the Sim500 FEG series, but uh, like I said, here for the JGR series, two weeks off uh Hope you have a good Christmas, John. Uh, any, any special plans? Oh, Ben, you know what? I'm just, you know, you know what's going on in my life with my wife and daughter. Zach. I'm just thankful that they're still here, and I'm looking forward to spending an evening with them in front of a nice, well-stoked fireplace. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow night's Indy race. And I really want us to take a minute, Ben, if you don't mind, just to thank Mitch Rollo, our producer. Uh, he, guys, he's behind the scenes every week for us, does an outstanding job. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the break, to be honest with you, to give my ears a little rest, Ben. But, uh, you know, I'll be out there painting cars for everybody and, uh, you know, doing tomorrow night's broadcast with you. But uh, how about you, buddy? What do you guys got planned for Christmas? Well, we're going to take a short vacation up to uh, to Gallenberg a couple of days before uh, Christmas. And I'm just going to have a, have a great time with some family on Christmas Day. And, of course, eat a lot of turkey and a, a, a whole plethora of good food. You're going to go find you some deep fried Oreos? <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Let us know what you're going to get for Christmas uh, on the Joe Gibbs Racing Facebook page there. Let us know how you're spending it with your family. And uh, by all means, from all of us here at the Sim Racing Network and iRacing.com, we hope you do have the best Christmas uh, possible. So for everybody at uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, Mitch Rolo, John Mushton, Sim 500, Joey Gatine and the guys over there, we, we thank you for tuning in tonight from the Monster Mile. We'll see you in two weeks on the dirt right here on the Sim Racing Network. Good night. Hope you have a great Christmas. And remember, when you're out there on the roads, to put that phone down. We'll see you next time.